Okay, I just wanted to finish up my comparison of the two rule sets, uh, playing top to the edge and playing it to the corner. Um, and the next thing I wanted to talk about was how uh, the rules of the game uh, of abstract strategy games are best when they're fashioned uh, so that the sides can uh, meet their goals when they follow the rules. They're able to meet their goals when they follow the rules. And when, uh, and a perfect example of that would be in backgammon, where the rules of that game uh, are fashioned in such a way that when both players, you know, use the rules to play the game, the goals the goals are are met. And um, in this game. Uh, you know, the game's goals have changed whenever you sort of have to play to the corner. Um, because when experts play, White's aim uh, oftentimes becomes to force a draw. And White has to get outside the... It's no longer to get to the edge, it's to get outside the perimeter. Um, either do that or force a draw. That becomes his goals. Whenever it's supposed to be to, to, to escape to a, a section of the board... Um, and then Black's goals changed by Black. You know, Black cannot really even capture the king at first. He has to kind of stay back, um, or else he'll get slaughtered. So, um, and also he'll, if he keeps attacking the king, then um, his 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 pieces are going to move away from the corners. So uh, he has to um, try. His goal would be then to prevent a draw instead of trying to surround the king on four sides. Um, and so, um, I just wanted to show, I set the board up kind of sort of like a tap, a tablet set, set up because, um, the next criticism or comparison I had is that oftentimes I start, when I started playing, uh, corner rules and played tablet, a lot of times it allowed, since, since the king can't escape to, can't threaten the edge of the board, and black is in a lot less danger. Black can make restless captures, but that's kind of what they, whenever they change the rules to, to play corner rules, that's kind of what they wanted to do. They wanted to make it a game of, of, of that allowed for a lot more capturing. Because uh, I guess people think it's more fun. So a lot of times you, you would see something like that in Tablet, which at the beginning of the game would be incredibly reckless. <clears throat> Uh, when this piece, you know, th it's an obvious capture to begin with, so, you know, this piece moves here, and then oftentimes you'll see when you play to the corner, somebody will, they, they have no fear of doing that. There's there's nothing to really consider. Um, but if it was playing to the edge, though, that would be a dubious move because uh, he would, the, the white would have one, or black would have one less piece to defend this sector of the board. Later on in the game, when you if, later on in an, playing to the edge game, that you might you could get away with something like that, but at the beginning, it's it's probably not a good idea. Um, also, too, whenever uh, you know um, uh, what would happen that I found out is that it would be a lot easier to defend against captures then, too. Whenever you're playing to the corner, because what what I also saw a lot of times when I would play is that you know you're somewhere on the board and you attack, uh, or it's usually happened when white white would attack a piece, you know, and the person just defends it just by moving one space over, and that's obviously not a whole lot of thought uh, put behind that, and there's really no consequence for it. I mean, it's it's perfectly okay move when you're playing to the corner because again, there's so few threats on the board that you can get away with that but to me that's just it's ob it's it's very obvious and it's doesn't seem very chess like uh it, i think it should be a little more difficult uh to to to, to avoid captures um that's just my opinion uh you don't have to agree but the um now, when you're playing to the edge, though, doing something like that, just moving a piece to get a, to get away from being threatened, you know, one space over, that could be, you, you have to put a lot more thought into it, because, you know, is he um, 
leaving a half, you know, making a, is he leaving a, a file that's half, is he making it half open that's controlled by white? That's a huge mistake. Uh, or if there's, um, you know, um, you know, it's, it, you know, whenever you just move pieces, is it, you know, is he, uh, you know, he wants to capture that one, you know, well, he's leaving this file completely open, so, um, you just have to put a lot more thought into, into what you're doing, um, you know, you could be forming a bad structure, a bad shape, by mo moving that one piece over, but, again, in Toblet, I saw, you know, I would play people, and they're just making silly moves, where they're just defending against an attack by just moving one space over with no thought behind it at all, <clears throat> and it doesn't, and there's no, they don't suffer any consequences for that, <clears throat> usually, so, um, Another thing is um, there's a a game, uh, an ancient game from Greece that that uh, people say that top is based on, and you basically would have you know pieces over on that side and pieces over on this side. It would be an eight by eight board, and it was a predecessor. It's considered to be a predecessor of Ludus La Truncalorum, which is a Roman game that was considered to be a, a predecessor of Top. And um, it, so it would be set up on an eight by eight board, and there would be white pieces against black pieces, and they'd be all over here, and they're all pawns, and they would all move the same way. And um, what people on the internet have found out, though, from trying to play from the rule set, all you would do is you just try and you know there'd be a lot more pieces to start with over here, eight pieces against eight, and what would happen is that the way you play is you move your pieces orthogonally, and then you just try and capture them, you know, orthogonally, like in, in top. And, um, but the thing was is that if you try that out with, say, a checkerboard, with checkers, and you you ha just have that one goal of just uh, capturing pieces, and that's it, you, the goal in that game, uh, that Greek game, would be to capture all of your enemy's pieces up until the last one, you know, because then they, they couldn't uh, capture, with, had, they wouldn't have two pieces to keep capturing. So, what happens though when people would play that game is that they would notice that you just move around and you can't, you never can, you know, capture somebody. It Once you, after you capture, you know, starts off with eight pieces and after you capture, you know, two or three pieces, the game becomes unplayable uh, because you just keep, over, you keep Every attack you have, somebody can escape easily to other parts of the board, and you can't, you can't ever get it to work. And um, that is, that is kind of what happens um, some of the time whenever, whenever you're playing to the corner. Um, the games can be extremely long, um, and part of the problem is because it, you, you're just. It just comes down to one goal because if if black was able to secure, you know, a pretty good perimeter around the board, ninety percent perimeter around the board, then you're stuck with playing that game of Petia, that Greek game, where you're going to be chasing the king forever. He moves. Oh, now I'm going to attack him. You know, here. Well, now he's going to move again. Now I'm going to attack him here. Now I'm going to attack other pieces. I'm going to put other pieces. Well, I'm just going to move, and it becomes a really long game. Um, and um, also, whenever a lot of the part of the board is, is, is the perimeter secured, then the moves get become less and less difficult to make because there's nothing you can do other than making an obvious attack somewhere. You know, you know, say there's a little tiny hole to get through here, and that's the only hole on the board. Well, he's going to come here. Well, duh, what is he doing? I mean, it's, it's sort of obvious what he's doing. And, well, here, I'll just make a really obvious block here. And that, that's, in, that's what ends up happening when you're playing um, corner rules and, and um, the, a lot of the board is secured uh, by black. The game just goes on and on and on. And to me, it gets very long and very boring. And um, the excitement from the beginning of the game dwindles very quickly and, um, in my opinion, just gets very boring. Um, And the last thing I wanted to just mention on this video is, um, once again, just the game's goals um, can be rarely met. Um, there's uh, so since since uh, you know 
White tries to make a draw for it, and once again, a draw for it is where, uh, you know, he has a whole, White has a whole bunch of pieces in the middle of the board, and there's a perimeter around the board that Black's made, and, um, and so White is able to position his pieces where none of them can be captured in a certain way, and he's got, like, two spaces open, and he's going back and forth, either with the king or with another piece. Uh, the only thing that matters is just that, uh, White can move in perpetuity, the same, the same two moves over and over again, and so Black can do whatever he wants and keep moving, and the game becomes a draw because it can never be resolved. And um, so they would call that, you know, that's called a, a, a draw for. It. And um, once again, so that so the the change that Black has in his goals is that he has to try and prevent that from happening. <clears throat> Is, becomes his main goal now instead of capturing the king and um, I usually don't like to um, uh, uh, put use speak the, of the game in terms of like how it it's like a reenactment of a real war or something whenever it's 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 just it's really a puzzle that you're just trying to solve you're presenting a problem for the other player but uh, metaphorically it is a war and um, when it comes to these forced draws, you kind of have to. I agree with the book, the manufacturer that made this board, uh, where where the if the king is surrounded by a perimeter, then then he loses because it makes perfect sense historically. The um, the Heims Kringla saga, and in several sagas, it, it you know that's what this is a reenactment of a king trying to attack a king and burning him in his hall. In the Heims Kringla saga, there's a story of King uh, Eric Bloodaxe who was who murdered his brother Rogenwald, I think that's how you pronounce it, when Eric's warband burned his brother to death in, in Rogenwald's hall, his brother's hall. And that was with Harold Fairhair's blessing over a religious matter. And basically the Heinz Kringlis states that 80 people were burned to death inside the hall. So he had his, he had his men, he, he had people with him inside, and they, they still burned him. So you can see why... Just because he's able to keep moving in here doesn't mean that, you know, he he doesn't lose because they're they're gonna kill him anyway. They he they burn it anyway. Uh, you know, you can't like send for reinforcements or wait for reinforcements or wait it out. They're there to burn you to burn you down whether you have your men inside or not. So anyway, I'm just gonna make one last video and I'm gonna sh it's gonna show how uh, the reputation, the false reputation of uh, Edgescape became balanced. Un is almost unbalanced how it became to be how that uh, reputation came to be and um, I'm going to show you how what the, be the mistakes the beginners made